Hello, it's Kenny Burdon. Good to be with you again for Beef Bash, virtually this time. Gonna talk a little about the cattle market, kind of where we are, and then wanna give you my thoughts on both stocker operators and how it's impacted them this year, and then talk a little bit about the cow-calf side as well for calves that were born this spring, gonna be weaned and sold this fall. You know, to say COVID hit the cattle markets hard would be an understatement. Um, you know, initially, I remember those first few weeks, it was more about closures and cancellations and how people were gonna respond. Saw interesting consumer behavior, folks kind of stockpiling and stocking up on things they don't usually do. There was a major shift away from at-home consumption and towards, uh, a major shift away from, away from home consumption and towards at-home consumption, and there was discussion about that. But in reality, all those things were just kind of a precursor to where we were gonna be headed in terms of the markets. And the big impact that we saw was really what we saw when those plants started to shut down and plants that were operating had to slow down. At one point back in the spring, we were, we were harvesting 35% fewer cattle than we did in the spring or the same time period in 2019. And it's hard to kind of get your head around that, but that literally means basically a drop in beef production of more than one third. So we saw impacts at the grocery store level for sure. Also though, what it did, it created a massive, a massive bottleneck. We had, we had the same number of cattle out there that need to go through the system. We had a processing bottleneck and we had a, had a reduction in the amount of beef that was coming out of the system. So we saw box beef prices run up drastically and we saw cattle prices drop sharply. Um, major impacts. What we saw at the feedlot level, um, naturally since feed yards couldn't move cattle through harvest, they ended up just not placing as many. So we saw two things. We saw kind of a buildup of cattle that were on feed longer in feed yards. And at the same time we saw, you know, here in Kentucky for example, we saw just a basic delay of placements and we saw that for several months. Now, the good news is we've largely worked through a good chunk of that backlog. If you look at slaughter numbers right now, they're running one to two percent below where they were in 2019. So compare that to being down 35 percent for a few weeks back in the spring, that's pretty impressive. Have to remember too that these packing plants are doing things differently now than they were then. That they've had to slow the line down. They've had to deal with labor issues. They've had to do some things with sanitation. You know, some have even put in um, glass dividers between workers. So they've had to do some things like that. And the fact that we're processing as close right now as we were last year to me is pretty impressive. And, and we've seen the theater cattle markets move in response to that. So let's take a quick look at what prices have done since the first of the year for, for first of all, heavy feeder steers. What I'm showing you is the state average price for an 850 pound medium and large frame number one feeder steer. This is data that I get from USDA AMS on a weekly basis. And then I kind of compile that, uh, make, some, make some quick calculations across weight ranges and, and put this together. I want you to notice though that from January to April on a monthly basis, that price dropped by between 25 and $30 per hundred weight very significant. So if you were somebody that had been carrying, you know, heavy feeders through winter or had heavy feeders to be sold in the spring, this hits you really hard. And outside of folks that had cattle on feed somewhere, they were, you know, these, these winter backgrounds were probably the hardest hit by COVID. Also notice though that we've added about 80% of that back. And I put this together uh, the, the end of August. So this price data goes through basically the last week, last full week of August. But notice that that heavy feeder steer right now on a state average basis is, is in the upper 120s. Large groups, when we recorded this, were, were well into the 130. So prices are a whole lot better. I still think we're about a nickel a pound below where we would be otherwise, but this market certainly got a whole lot better for heavy feeders. Also, we'll take a look at the calf prices. I use a 550 pound feeder steer kind of as my baseline again, medium and large range number one, two steer. I've said many times, this is probably the flattest calf market that we've ever seen. And that's unusual because calf markets aren't supposed to be flat. And the biggest thing that COVID did, it took out our spring price increase on these calves. Usually we see a nice run up in calf prices when we get into the you know March, April, first of May time period. But as stocker operators are starting to place calves on pasture, we see those prices run up quite a bit. And we didn't see that this year. So what COVID did, it really took out our spring price increase. In reality, calf prices didn't drop that much this spring but I'm convinced they would have been 15, maybe even 20 cents a pound higher had we not had COVID this spring. So there was definitely a major impact there as well. Now, as we start thinking about impacts, I wanna talk just quickly about backgrounding operations and stock operations, and then talk about cow-calf operations. But this was a real, real lesson this year in price risk management. 
and we really learned a lot. And you, you hear a lot about black swan events, and you know, COVID certainly was one. So, you know, from the from big picture, the first thing to understand is, you know, these kind of things are not predictable. And stocker operators, winter backgrounders need to be looking at things they can do to control and manage their price risk. And you know, that was lesson number one. At the same time, this spring, COVID was a buying opportunity for some of these lighter calves. There was some really good buys to be had on calves, especially in April this year. So a lot of folks that placed calves into grazing programs this spring are gonna do pretty well on those calves, I think, when they sell this fall, if not much changes between now and then, and I think the market will hold reasonably well from here. The other thing to be aware of is that this market gave us several opportunities to price these calves at profitable profitable margins, at least three or four up until July. And things have been very good really for July and August in terms of price. So we're gonna do reasonably well on these backgrounding operations and stock operations that have carried calves through the summer on grass. As so we kind of shift gears and think a little bit about the cow-calf side, um, I'm much more optimistic than I was about this calf market, even as much as three months ago. Been a lot of discussion about that backlog of cattle. Um, you know, I like to look at several things, I like to look at slaughter weights. And although slaughter weights are not coming down, they are getting closer to where they were a year ago. Um, typically, our slaughter weights increase from spring to fall, so we're still in that time period. Have to also remember that we have cheap grain right now, which tends to play into those weights. I also like to look at how many cattle have been on feed over 90 and 120 days. And that's what we really saw increase in April. May and June. We've seen that drop a whole lot from June though, and that's an indication we're working through cattle on feed. We're also seeing placements pick back up, which always bids well for a fall calf market because we want those feed yards aggressively bidding on calves in the fall of the year because that's when most of our springborn calves sell. So all of those things have me thinking that we may see a pretty solid calf market. Now, not where we want it to be long term, but a whole lot better than I thought it would have been back in the spring. My guess would be state average basis of five weight steer is in the 140s uh, come fall. And you can add usually a dime or sometimes even 15 cents for larger high quality groups of calves at that time. So lesson number one, it's not gonna be a great calf market, but things certainly better than they did a few months ago. I also wanna talk a little bit about just some basic marketing. And as cow calf operators, you know, we've gotta understand that we've gotta do anything that we can do to add value to these calves. And I've talked in the past about, you know, selling, selling steers versus bulls uh, the last 10 years. A 550 pound steer calf's outsold a bull calf by $11 a hundredweight, which is almost 60 bucks a head. So that's, that's a lot of money to leave on the table if you're selling bulls. Folks like to ask or talk sometimes about, well, you, what about weight gain on the bull versus the steer? Fair comment. But you know, also remember, unless you're in a market that doesn't allow you to do this, you know, implants provide an option that you can get the weight gain associated with the bulls and get the price issue with the steer. So you know, do think about things like that. Um, you know, there's, there's always a difference between green calves and wean calves. And, you know, I'm showing you some market data here from last week of August. And I want you just to notice the price differential between those five weight steers that are value added. And that's the market reporter's way of telling you those calves have been weaned and at least had, had, you know, some type of health program. You know, at the five weight level, you're talking about about nine cents a pound difference in those value added calves versus those nondescript calves. If you look at those six weights, you're seeing the same sort of thing, a little bit bigger, even more like 12 cents a pound or so difference in those value added calves versus green calves. So certainly think about, do I wanna keep my calves a bit longer so I can sell them as value added cattle that have been through a health program and are not fresh off the cow? They almost always outsell the green calves and usually it's anywhere between, you know, six to maybe 12 cents or so a pound. So that's fairly significant. So I'm gonna wrap things up here with just kind of some concluding thoughts and just kind of lessons I think learned from 2020. And I think the real story has really just been just how unpredictable markets can be and how volatile they can be. There are very few things you can do on the cost side, cost control side, that are gonna have more impact on your bottom line than basic price volatility. So I think as a general rule, we've got to add price risk management as one of those things that we just have to learn to manage year in, year out. I've talked a lot historically about futures and options and, and they're out there. You know, the ability to use futures contracts or use something like a put option to give yourself some downside price risk. There are some folks out there that do some contracting that may, that may contract cattle with downstream amenities like, like feed yards or, you know, backgrounding operations, something like that. And those options are out there. They provide opportunity to manage some downside price risk. I have also talked some in the past about livestock risk protection insurance, LRP insurance. Um, 
been around for a while, and basically the one you want to think about LRP insurance kind of like a uh, scalable put option where you can kind of set a price floor on cattle, but you're not locked into the 50,000 pound feeder cattle futures contract quantity. There's been a lot of effort made to improve um, the use or increase the use of LRP insurance, and one of the more recent things that's been done is the subsidies have been increased pretty significantly. Premium subsidy on LRP used to be 13%. Now it varies a little bit based on coverage level, but it's gonna run between 25 and 35%. So much bigger subsidy on LRP insurance now. It's a chance to set some, it's a chance to kind of set a price floor on your cattle. I think something we should all be thinking about, whether we're stocker operators, backgrounders, or cow-calf operators, market risk is really something that we've got to learn to manage. And 2020 was the perfect example of why we have to manage that risk now.